Aye, aye, aye. I was busy over in the uh, hallway track. I didn't hear the alarm go off. Sorry. Um, so, uh, which is a reminder, folks, y'all can come hang out and chat with us over in the hallway track during our breaks. Uh, but next, we're going to have Mark Johnston talking about uh, development workflows and some of the processes he uses while working on FreeBSD. So I'll turn it over to Mark. Hello. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let me just share my screen. So let's see if that works properly. Yep. Oh, I need to resize it a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, so, hello, I'm Mark Johnston. Um, I work for the FreeBSD Foundation. I've been a FreeBSD source committer for, um, I think, about eight or nine years now, um, working in uh, a bunch of different areas. I do a lot of work on the kernel. Um, and uh, for the past few years, I've been working uh, more or less as, as an independent contributor to, to FreeBSD in the sense that uh, while I work for the FreeBSD Foundation, most of the infrastructure that I use to actually do my daily work uh, as far as code reviews, building, testing, and so on goes, um, I, use my own, I use my own systems. Um, so while preparing for this talk, I basically spent a bunch of time trying to clean up the number of scripts that I use to automate various parts of that workflow. Um, and uh, the, the problems I want to talk about, which, which motivates some of the things I'm going to share, are basically that it, I get the impression that a lot of FreeBSD developers um, either belong to an organization where that kind of infrastructure is handled, like there's some infrastructure team that has a CI pipeline that you can use, um, or uh, folks have their own sets of scripts for, for automating various things. Um, we, we don't have a lot of shared infrastructure for doing things like uh, building a VM image that you can use to run the, uh, the, the FreeBSD test suite. Um, it's, it's certainly not that difficult, but uh, for someone new to FreeBSD, new as a contributor, for instance, a GSOC student or a co-op student, um, we, we don't have any canned ways of doing that really. Um, so what I want to show you is some, uh, uh, ra rather than trying to uh, make my own scripts production worthy, because I think that's actually fairly difficult to do in a, in a useful way, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I wanted to show, uh, show off some experiments I've been doing using a Bastille BSD, which is a, a GL manager. Um, so, uh, going back to that example of, of just running the, the FreeBSD test suite, um, we can consider the example where I have a uh, uh, single change to the kernel. So, a simple patch. And basically, the problem I want to solve is okay, well, I want to run the test suite with this kernel modification applied. I want to do that as quickly as possible, ideally with a single command. Um, how can I do that? Uh, so the, the basic steps generally involve, so I mean, there, there's lots of ways you can go about this. You could just compile the kernel on a, on a spare system, reboot into it and run the test suite. Uh, for my purposes, I don't have a huge amount of hardware lying around. Uh, so I try to use uh, virtual machines and, and in particular Beehive as much as possible because that makes things uh, a lot easier. Um, so already I have a few steps ahead of me. I have to build a new kernel, install it into a VM image, boot the VM image somehow, run the test suite, collect the results. Um, so there's, there's a few steps and, and we have single commands which can do most of those things, right? We, we have uh, high level build targets. You can make the whole FreeBSD world. You can make the kernel. You can install it to a directory. You can create a file system from the contents of a directory. You can create a disk image. Uh, populated with partitions uh, uh, that uh, consist of the file systems that you just created. And that's a whole bunch of steps. And like I said, um, I, I have the distinct impression that we, we really don't have a good uh, shared set of tools that if not everyone, then, then most people can use in an accessible way. Um, there are tools that help with certain subsets of these tasks. So for instance, Pudriere image is quite useful. Um, you can use it to uh, create a jail based on a, on a Git tree and with a single command build a VM image. But then you're left with the problems of, oh, well, how do I boot it? How do I configure it to run the test suite automatically? And actually, Pudriere makes that uh, fairly straightforward as well, but it's, it's really not as simple as I'd like. 
Um, so while I spent a bunch of time trying to write scripts to, to automate a lot of this stuff, I kept running into problems wherein, um, you know, I, I ended up having to make assumptions about my own environment. I would hard code paths. I would have to have some directory to store a state. Um, I try to make use of jails, VNet, and ZFS as much as possible because they make it really easy to create ephemeral um, FreeBSD instances in the sense that I can uh, create something that I can later throw away, which is exactly what I want for, for a one-off task like running the, uh, the FreeBSD test suite on a particular change. Once the test suite is run and everything's passed, I probably don't want to keep that VM image around. Um, so trying to solve this with my own scripts is, is a bit daunting because I end up having to re-implement a bunch of things that, that other um, fairly popular FreeBSD software already does. So like I said, I, I use jails and VNet a lot. We have quite a few jail managers. Um, I, I, uh, Pudra is quite capable uh, uh, when it comes to building images. We also have uh, uh, release targets in the source tree. Um, the, the Jenkins CI infrastructure that we use has its own set of scripts for building VM images. So all of the, all of the components kind of exist somewhere, but in, in a monolithic, um, sort of monolithic uh, uh, piece of software. Like if I want to tweak something about the way Poudrier builds images, um, I might end up having to look at the source code and modify it, which is not really something I want to have to do. Um, so, my goal again is to, to try and make it easier to share tooling and to try and make it easier for new contributors uh, to, to get started with a bit less friction. Um, my goal is generally to try and automate basic things with a single command as much as possible and to use all these nice FreeBSD features, again, Jails, Beehive, VNet, ZFS, and so on, um, as much as possible. Um, as far as actual development goes, I also want to be able to use Beehive to uh, have short edit compile test loops um, to, to the extent that's possible with kernel development. I mean, anytime you modify the kernel, you have to reboot. But if you do that in, in a VM and you make it possible to, to install a new kernel into the VM quickly, then you can actually uh, uh, get a pretty tight loop um, in the order of 20 or 30 seconds or so. So um, as you might have noticed, I don't have any slides uh, where I actually uh, uh, kind of go through most of these steps. I wanted to instead uh, show a couple of short demos, making use of Bastille to implement um, uh, solutions to some of these tasks in a, in a modular way that separates concerns. The problem with writing monolithic scripts is that you end up adding a whole bunch of options to control various configuration parameters. So again, I have this kernel change I want to test. Okay, well, uh, I can build a generic kernel or I can build a generic a KA sand kernel, if I want to test with a, a kernel address sanitizer enabled, I might want to build it for ARM64, RISC-5 rather than AMD64. Uh, I might want to use a particular source path for the, uh, for the tree rather than user source. There's basically a whole bunch of configuration options that I, that I might want to choose from. Um, I mean, just going to more examples, I might want to have customized source.conf options so that my build is quick. I might want to install some packages into the VM um, before I boot it. Um, there's, there's quite a few different things. And, and again, writing monolithic uh, scripts to, to automate this works well at the beginning, but once you have enough people using them, uh, you end up with, with all these configuration parameters and, and lots of difficulties around uh, uh, hard-coded assumptions that one has to make. So Bastille, um, I won't talk about Bastille specifically too much. Um, it's, and, and as it happens, uh, the author, uh, Christer, uh, gave a FreeBSD Friday's talk last week uh, about exactly that. Uh, he, he presented Bastille BSD and showed off some of its features with some demos on our, on our Raspberry Pi. Um, it's, it's a jail manager. It's not dissimilar from some of the other ones that are quite popular. Um, I've used IOCage a bit as well. Uh, but there's one feature of Bastille which actually makes it quite appealing to me, and that's templates. Uh, and that's templates are, uh, uh, as far as I know, a fairly unique feature to uh, to Bastille. I don't know of any real equivalents in others. I know IOCage has some plugin mechanism, but I haven't looked at it in, in any great depth. Um, but the point is, a, a template allows you to specify some parameterized set of configuration and logic that gets applied to a new channel. Uh, 
Um, so what I use them to do is uh, essentially create a jail, nullfs mount my source tree into it, build a VM image, and start the VM. And the structure of Bastille templates means that I can split out the logic of creating, uh, creating and configuring uh, uh, jails from, from other components of, of this task. Um, so again, when I want to build a VM image to run the test suite, I have to build a world, build a kernel, create a file system, populate with some, some uh, for, for instance, my VM image probably wants to have an etsy stub. Um, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of different things. So there's a few different steps and Bastille templates make it fairly straightforward actually to inject customized logic into any one of those steps. Uh, so I've been working on a, on a set of templates that make it easy to automate uh, some of the things that I used to do with my own monolithic scripts before. And um, so the demos I hope will kind of convince you that this is a, a pretty good path forward. Um, and it's, it's something for me that's still a work in progress, but it's uh, I think quite promising and I'm looking forward to uh, experimenting further with it. Um, I've already uh, written a few templates which make it possible to run syscaller in, uh, in um, a jail, which is something I've been trying to automate without a huge amount of success for a long time. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about it, uh, talk a little bit about that later, but uh, for now, I'll just kind of get into uh, the examples I wanted to show. Um, so again, going back to this kernel change that I have on the screen, I want to run tests for that. So um, I enumerated some of the steps that are required before. I'll kind of show you what that looks like as a Bastille template. So I have a, a template called Bastille Test VM. Um, it's basically just a small set of files that live in a Git repository to run GitHub. Bastille has a nice little feature, which I mean, it's just a wrapper for Git clone, but you can import templates from GitHub and GitLab and so on uh, very, very easily. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite convenient um, if you're trying to share templates with others uh, and uh, uh, so on. So there's a Bastille file. In this, uh, in this directory, which basically contains all of the logic um, that I want to apply to a jail after it's been created. So the standard workflow is I create a jail based on some release, usually 13.0 in my case. Uh, I bring it up and then I tell Bastille to apply this template. Uh, and so this syntax, I mean, it seems pretty obviously inspired by Docker files. It's not identical, but it's a, it's a pretty similar idea. It's a constrained language uh, that lets me uh, execute arbitrary commands within a jail, and it has a whole bunch of affordances that let me um, connect the jail to, to resource, resources outside of it. So, for instance, one thing that I, I try to do pretty carefully is not have multiple Git clones of my, uh, of my uh, FreeBSD tree sitting around because they tend to get out of sync and I forget which one contains which changes and so on. So I try to have a central um, uh, git clone perhaps with many work trees and i use an lfs mounts to expose that uh, to uh, to wherever the the build is actually taking place so for instance in this particular case there's a single mount command which takes a freebie d host source path and mounts it at a source path source path within the within the jail um, at the beginning i've declared a few uh, uh, variables which are used uh, in the rest of the uh, the bastille file uh, some of them are public in the sense that you can specify that when you apply the template so obviously you might want to change the, the parallelism of the build depending on how many cores your build system has. You might want to use a particular external tool chain. Obviously you want to be able to specify the, the source path uh, on the host and the kernel configuration. Uh, so those are all things you can do uh, on the command line when you actually apply this. Um, um, Do we have any questions so far? Does Bastille support jails with just a handful of executables and their shared libs? Um, I don't quite know what that means. Uh, are, you, are you referring to the distinction between thin and thick jails? Um, and, and if so, yes, it does. Um, the way uh, this particular workflow works um, is that I, I basically bootstrap a, a copy of 13.0 and Bastille creates jails using that using nullfs mounts. 
So all of the jails share a common copy of the base system. It's also possible to, to uh, create so-called thick jails in which uh, uh, the, the jails copy of the base system is, is completely independent from, from anything else. Um, Bestial also supports VNet jails, which is what I use pretty much exclusively, uh, just because I find them to be uh, um, easier to configure and more flexible. Um, so this is the complete Bestial file uh, that I use to build uh, a VM image from a particular source path that will, uh, and, and then when the VM image, the VM is booted, it will automatically run the test suite, uh, print a report, and then shut down. So that's as, it's, as, as you'll see, it's not quite one command, but it's uh, a lot simpler than uh, uh, what I've used in the past, in the sense that, you know, there's 50 files in this, you know, a third of them just declare variables. Most of them are pretty bog standard. I'm, I'm building world, build the kernel, install world, install kernel, and so on. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's very straightforward. And basically what I, what I like about it, particularly is that it lets me separate concerns. Um, I can use Bastille to, with a single command, create a jail uh, with its own network stack, with its own ZFS data set. And uh, that's totally independent from this template that I have plot onto it. Uh, so there's a few other files in the, uh, in the template, and those are effectively an overlay. Uh, so these are things that get copied into the jail when the template is applied. So I have a script called run.sh, which does nothing but run beehive uh, with, uh, with, the, with the VM image that uh, uh, was created by the Bastille file. So another useful uh, a little feature that uh, best tool templates implement is that you can uh, specify a variable once and then uh, tell it to substitute that variable in any uh, overlay files. So you don't end up having to uh, duplicate various configuration variables. So, I mean, I won't try to explain what's happening here too much. Um, oh, there, there, there's one other little Little thing. So in VMNC, these are overlay files that get copied into the uh, into the VM image. Uh, I just use RC local to actually run the test script. So it does nothing but run Cure and write a report and shut down. So in a, in a more sophisticated infrastructure, you probably want something that can actually, you know, uh, send mail or, or post to some Slack channel or something like that. Um, but I think again, the fact that it's possible to uh, uh, split up all this logic in, in, a, in a composable way um, makes it a lot easier to implement that sort of thing. These, these templates that I'm going to show are, are very much works in progress that I'm still uh, using to replace my existing scripts. So another question. Does the virtualization influence the resulting behavior of properties of build systems? I mean, something depending on timing, for example. Um, for, it, for some specific cases, yes, um, there, there are certain things that VMs are not convenient for. Um, so this isn't really a universal solution to the problem of how do I, how do I you know, run the test suite and make sure that I haven't introduced any bugs. I mean, for one, our test suite definitely won't catch everything. It, it's been growing um, quite steadily over the past few years and it, it catches bugs very regularly, um, but it's, it's not perfect. And there's definitely, uh, there's definitely cases where it's not going to be sufficient. We're going to have to go back to the old school way of just, you know, install um, a kernel on a, on a system, reboot it. For instance, whenever I work on, um, or not, not whenever, but sometimes when I work on uh, changes to the memory management code in the, in the kernel, um, I'm making use of some particular properties of the hardware platform. Um, NUMA is a big one. I have a, I have a two socket system here that I use for a lot of, uh, a lot of my sort of beefier testing. Um, but for a lot of purposes, uh, the running, running the, the test suite in a VM is, is a perfectly good way to catch a lot of problems. That's exactly what our CI system does. Um, and it's, you know, again, the point isn't to, to try and catch everything before it gets pushed into main. The point is to, to raise the baseline and make it easier for contributors to feel confident about their changes without having to um, interact or without having to get feedback from a human because feedback from humans is bad, but um, it's, it's nice to 
have have some level of assurance before uh, before you start involving other people. So, so that's the the test VM template which I created, which again does nothing but uh, create a test VM and provide a script to run it. So, um, I can I I have a few uh, uh, Bastille jails already created. Um, you can see there's one called test VM which already has uh, this template applied. So I'll just show very quickly what that looks like. Uh, when I when I run a, when I want to run um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the test suite, it's basically a, a single command. That's it, or at least it should be. So there we go. Beehive is now running in the foreground. I'm going to boot up. This takes a few seconds, but it's you know reasonably quick. And right away, it just starts running the test suite. And uh, once it's done, it'll shut itself down automatically. I just told it there. Takes takes a little while to run, but uh, uh, yeah. I'll I'll show uh, another example where I actually apply that to uh, to a new jail. And um, again, haven't quite cut this down to a single command that I can just run, but I'm I'm pretty close, and it shouldn't be too hard to write a few wrapper scripts to do that. Uh, so the reason I'm excited about this stuff again is is the the ability to split apart different things. Um, <clears throat> if you ever look at the uh, the, the CI scripts we use in Jenkins, um, there's quite a lot of build scripts in there um, for, for various targets. Um, there's a lot of duplication that happens. And I, I don't think that's, that's I, I think that's just kind of the, the, the nature of the way uh, this, this particular piece of infrastructure works. It's kind of monolithic. It's not really easy to take the scripts right out of our, our previous DCI um, environment and just kind of drop them somewhere locally and have them just work automatically. Um, so here though, you know, the, the, the basic, basic requirements are pretty minimal. You have to have Bastille installed, which is you know, a package install and, and you enable it in rc.conf. And if you want it to use ZFS, you tell it which SQL to use. Uh, so what I'd kind of like us to, to, to move towards at least as far as it, you know, CI infrastructure goes um, is exactly that kind of separation where we maintain a set of uh, you know, templates. I mean, I, that's deal I like because it, it already has all these things implemented. It, it's definitely not perfect. And I'll talk a little bit about that depending on how much time I have. Um, but uh, it's, I, I think this, this kind of forced separation is, is definitely the right way to go. I think it will make it a lot easier for organizations that consume FreeBSD to set up their own CI pipelines um, without having to kind of uh, rebuild everything from scratch, which is really what I suspect uh, more or less happens today. So as far as actually creating um, a new, new jail, so I'll create a new one called testvm2. Um, the, the dash v just means it's a vnet jail. Uh, this is the base release. I want it to use DHCP, um, so it's going to uh, it's going to do that automatically. Takes a few seconds, but it's it's reasonably quick. And now I have one. Of course, it shows up now when I uh, run Bastille list. And it's you know Bastille stores a bunch of state. Of course, it has a jail.conf, um, a few other pieces of configuration. But it's it's really quite simple. There's an fs tab. There's a jail.conf, and there's the actual uh, root directory of the jail. So if I want to tweak uh, you know any any settings in here, which I tend to do, and I think this is actually one of Bastille's, uh, uh, maybe not weaknesses, but it's, it's an area where I think it could use a bit more, uh, uh, a bit better UI. Um, it's, uh, you know, really, really quite straightforward and, and intuitive to configure. Bastille itself is, is really simple. It's written in shell script. It's, it's easy to read. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, there's a question. Um, can templates be nested? Uh, yes. Yeah, I actually didn't mention that. I haven't really made use of it yet, but it's possible for templates to include other templates. Uh, so in that way, um, I think it'll be possible to build uh, uh, some infrastructure that makes it easy for me to kind of compose um, workflows based on uh, uh, 
basically reusing existing components. So here I gave an example where we run the FreeBSD regression test suite. There's other test suites. Uh, Peter Holmes Stress 2 is a really good example. Um, I occasionally run that in VMs. Uh, it, it should be very straightforward for me to reuse the logic uh, I, I put in this test VM template um, to create a VM in which I can run Stress 2 instead of the regression test suite. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's one of the things I, I plan to do in the, in the coming few days. Uh, so there's, there's again, uh, I think a lot of composability here. And another question is, how does Bastille compare to uh, POT? Um, I'm actually not too familiar with POT. I've, I've played around with it a little bit. Um, as I understand it, uh, POT schools are, are really about orchestration and making it easier for, uh, making it easier for um, uh, uh, to, to run a jail using uh, uh, various orchestration tools. Um, uh, so I, I think I think their goals are, are a bit different. I, I, it's hard for me to really say anything intelligent, um, uh, but uh, um, I, I mean, again, Bastille itself is not, and I, you know, I, I don't want to comment too much on the merits of, of various jail managers, but um, Bastille templates are really the, the kind of killer feature for me. Um, I think a lot of the standard jail managers all provide pretty similar functionality. Um, and, and but this is this is one area where it seems to be uh, uh, a bit different. So, you know, I, I don't think Bastille itself is necessarily the end all be all, but I think it definitely provides a, 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 a direction forward and, and um, uh, some some really nice ideas that uh, that can be uh, that can be used here. We've talked a lot over the past few months about um, having pre pre commit CI testing uh, done more more rigorously. And, and other things like that. Um, there's there's a lot of conversations to be had about how exactly we go about that, um, but I think this provides uh, uh, a few of the a few of the missing pieces, or at least it can. Uh, how do I get test results? Um, so going back to my RC local script, um, you can see there's a line that says Q or report. So right now it only prints um, it prints the results to standard output basically. Bastille automatically collects the console log somewhere, so it's it's pretty trivial to just fetch that and and uh, look at it. Uh, I, I would once I've had some more time to hack on these templates, I'll probably um, have some way of actually exporting the file, the the QA report file, back to the to the jail in which the VM is running, and then um, you know by default print that somewhere or, or add it to an email and so on. Uh, another question. Uh, I don't think I have a ton of time left, so I should probably um, not try to answer too much more. But uh, about how two, does... more minutes. two more minutes? Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh, ooh. Okay, it might be a bit more. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll try to be very quick. Um, but the, the question is, how does network performance with VNet and EPAR on FreeBSD 13? Um, I don't think it's great. I, I did some profiling of it last year, but I, I haven't really identified some of the problems, um, or I, I haven't root caused any of the problems or, or done much to, to actually fix them. Um, uh, all the all the packets through an ePair kind of get bounced to a NetISR thread, um, and that slows things down quite a lot. There's a lot of context switching. Um, yeah, so it's it's not great, but I think it's it's something that uh, that will be improved as as time goes on. Okay, so very quickly, I'm gonna. Oh, I already created my VM. Um, so one uh, one catch. Uh, is that with jails, I have to uh, explicitly say that I want to allow um, beehive to be used. So that's that's basically a jail.conf variable. Like that. And now I apply the template that I just showed you to this new jail. Uh, so I won't, I mean, this, this takes a little while to, to run because it builds, uh, builds all the FreeBSD, installs a few packages. I installed toolchain packages to reduce the build times. Um, but uh, once, once it's done, you have a jail in which you can run the test suite very easily. And I specify additional parameters like this. So if I want to, I want to make use of all the cores on the system to, to build, then this is one of the few uh, parameters that I can specify. So 
the Elegant package, but it doesn't respond to Control C. Okay. Uh, so that was the test VM. I have a similar um, a similar template that I use to uh, to kind of compile it at test loops. Uh, so again, this this template has already been applied uh, to uh, a jail called Dev. Let's see. So um, Dev. Oh. So this one just drops in a login prompt, and uh, I have another another script that lives in the uh, uh, the template, which lets me rebuild the kernel. So you can see I have a few different parameters. Um, they're chosen by default to try and minimize the rebuild time. Uh, so what I do here is I actually install a kernel into a separate disk, and I have the VM configured to boot off of that disk. So that way, every time I want to install a new kernel from the host into the VM, um, instead of rebuilding a whole VM image, I can just uh, uh, I can just create a new kernel disk, and I don't have to mount any file systems or anything like that. It's it's pretty fast. So this will do an incremental rebuild by default. Um, it's still a bit pokey, and I'm actually not quite sure why. Um, for instance, I've noticed that uh, the incremental uh, uh, yeah, you can see it's linking the kernel and it'll do this each time. but uh, yeah, I found that it's annoying for me too. For some reason, it decides it always needs to rebuild verge that verge that C, even though yeah. I feel like it shouldn't. And so there's like one dependency, and so every time I do something in a module, it always yeah. rebuilds the kernel. It's annoying as what is. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, here, here we have. Here we uh, have uh, oh, sorry. I think feedback on my uh, here, John. Thanks. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll try to wrap this up uh, very quickly. Um, it's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> I have uh, one more example, which is a bit more involved, but I, I won't go into it in too much detail. So you can see I, I rebuilt the kernel in 27 seconds. That was actually pretty slow. A lot of that comes from linking running CTF merge. I'm going to try and fix that once I get a chance. And then it installs the kernel, rebuilds. And so now in the VM, if I shut down, or if I reboot rather, um, it'll automatically reboot into the, the new kernel that I installed. So I have a pretty, at least from a kernel developer's perspective, a fairly tight um, at a compiled test loop. So I, I think that's, that's pretty useful. And the last template I want to show is a lot more involved, but uh, um, something I personally found uh, pretty handy is uh, a template that lets me run a uh, syscaller in, uh, in a FreeBSD jail. So uh, syscaller is a project from, from Google, which is, it's, it's basically an operating system fuzzer. Um, it effectively generates random programs and then runs them and, and with the end goal of trying to crash your kernel. Uh, it's very good at that. Uh, and it uses VMs to do that because uh, you know, that gives you a, a sealed environment that you can, where, where you can, where you can Run whatever programs you want, and you don't have to worry about destroying any state uh, in the fuzzer itself. So I have a Bastille file for this. It's somewhat more involved than um, the rest, but it's actually still pretty simple. Um, so because syscaller wants to create a bunch of VMs, um, you know, it, there, there's a few there's a few pieces of configuration. Um, I create um, a bridge interface in the in the in the jails VNet. Um, I uh, enable DNS mask so it can hand out uh, IPs to the to the fuzzer VMs. I create an SSH key so that syscaller can log into the VMs and copy files to and from. Um, and uh, uh, th there's a whole bunch of configuration. And I think a lot of people have not really set up syscaller on FreeBSD partly because currently you have to do a whole bunch of manual configuration. Uh, but with Bastille, a lot of that goes away. There's still some a bit of manual configuration that you need, and that's documented in README. Um, but uh, uh, I think probably 90% of it goes away if you just apply this template. And I can show you very quickly what that looks like. Um, I think that'll that'll probably wrap it up for me, unfortunately. Um, so I have a so I want to I have a I have an RC script which starts this caller. Um, this manager. Uh, 
And uh, if you uh, run it, you can see this manager starting. It's automatically starting VMs. It starts a web server as well. You can, uh, I'm not sharing my browser, but I'll, I'll show you here. Um, you can kind of see uh, in a real browser, it looks, it looks a lot better, uh, but it, it's, it's got a bunch of state, a bunch of counters for, for things that it's doing. Nothing yet, just because I, I only just started it, but uh, um, uh, you get things like crash reports and reproducers here. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to uh, uh, create a template, which lets me install all this stuff with, with relative ease. I think it took me maybe like three or four hours and it was my first, it was the, my first time trying to use Bastion templates. So um, I guess to, to summarize everything I've said so far, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this, uh, uh, this kind of approach to building, to building tooling that I can, I can share with other developers. And it's something uh, I, I expect to spend a, a fair bit more time on um, going forward. Um, there, there are some UI issues, especially around jails that make a few things cumbersome but I think this is a good incentive to actually uh, uh, try and go in and, and fix some of those. Um, I'd, ha I'd be happy to talk about what they are, but I, I think I've definitely run, run, uh, run out of time. Um, but uh, if, if you're interested, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to me. And I'll also probably start a few mailing list threads about some of the, the more egregious issues that uh, I've run into. Um, thanks. Sure, do you have your uh, scripts pushed to like a private repository or public repository on GitHub or something like that? Yeah, they, they are. Um, so, so I developed them on my workstation and then I use, uh, I, I don't have links for them available, but uh, um, they're right there. I'll, I'll post, I'll create a link on the Dev Summit page uh, to, to another wiki page, which has these links. Again, they're, they're very much works in progress. I'm not quite ready to actually have anyone else use them yet, um, but uh, I, well, I think they're- In my experience, like my GD, my KGDB scripts are also works in progress, but people still use them because they yeah. push them somewhere. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, it's you know, if if you want to go ahead and, and grab one of these, it's really just a matter of running this uh, bootstrap command on your own system. Um, if you run that, you'll get this template stored locally, and then you can reference it um, in, in the sense that you can create your own jails and start applying it. Cool. Okay. Well, why don't we, uh, well, thank you, Mark. That was very cool. There's a lot of good feedback and stuff on IRC. Um, let's take about a 10 minute break. Uh, and then we'll, after our 10 minute break, we're going to come back for our next session. Our next session is going to be a panel focused on downstream distros that are kind of desktop focused, which is going to be chaired by Ed. So I'll see everyone in about 10 minutes. Thanks again, Mark. Um, does my mic work? Just who says? Yes, for me. your mic work is, is working. And by the way, I, I, Ed reminded me, I'm going to go hang out in the hallway tracks. Y'all are welcome to come hang out in there during your break if you're not doing something else. And we'll see you in about nine minutes or so.